Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video with the WWE Elite Collection Series 28 Demolition Crush. Yet this ain't no ordinary action figure review, as I'm going to be reuniting him with his Mattel WWE Legends tag team partners, Axe and Smash, and they'll be facing off against the Jax Pacific WWE Classic Superstars Triple Pack Demolition Axe, Smash and Crush in an action figure comparison. It's Mattel versus Jax Pacific. We're going to be taking a look at all the various aspects of the action figures, comparing likeness, accessories, and articulation. Then at the end of the video, you guys are going to decide which demolition trio are best. So here are the two sets out of packaging, and immediately you can see Mattel win it hands down on the entrance gear, coming with vests, gauntlets, and masks, whereas the Jax version just come with the masks. And as I remove the masks, I will, however, say it's probably not the fairest comparison when it comes to entrance gear, as Mattel's figures were all released single issue and Jax did release Axe and Smash as single issue with full entrance gear. Taking a closer look at the entrance gear on Mattel's Crush and it is made from a rubber material and removable. The gauntlets can unfasten and then you need to work the vest off over the arms of the action figure. Yet while coming up short on entrance gear the Jax triple pack does come with the tag team belts. Plus Crush and Smash come with removable elbow pads. Axe doesn't and neither do any of the Mattel figures, so I'm not sure what is most accurate to the actual in-ring combatants. Another key difference is that the straps on the Mattel figures are a separate piece molded in rubber, while on the Jax figures it's painted onto the torsos. In reality, Crush was introduced into Demolition to replace Axe in the ring, who at the time was injured. So Axe primarily adopted a managerial role outside the ring, interfering when possible. But what I liked about the addition of Crush was that he was younger, freshening up the team, and he was also much bigger, representing to me as a child watching wrestling a more menacing presence. And of the two action figure trios we see, see here the Mattel set have definitely nailed that size differential with Crush appearing noticeably larger than the other two while on the Jack set not so much they're all kind of around the same size ish size was always a problem Jack's figures represented you can often see that their Rey Mysterio figures are as tall as their Undertaker ones now taking a closer look at the likenesses and it is a bit hard to look beyond the makeup and the Jack and Mattel versions each have different makeup designs so it may be a case of which makeup design you prefer. But one thing I have noticed is that the Jax figures all have equally expressive faces. And while the Mattel Crush and Smash look like they're about to kick ass, the expression on the face of the Mattel Axe reads... Yeah, whatever. And for me, the figure that least looks like the wrestler is the Mattel Crush. Beyond the makeup, I just don't see the likeness there. And I imagine if you painted both of these with a flesh colored paint with the Jax version, you could still see Crush's likeness. With the Mattel one, you just have a generic gritted teeth guy. A detail I enjoy with both the Mattel and Jack's version of Smash is that they captured his bald spot. And now using the crushes as subjects to look at articulation, the heads of each rotate side to side, and there's the tiniest bit of up and down movement to the heads. At the shoulder, each figure's arms rotate and they also move up this much and then back down. There's upper arm rotation, then each have a single jointed elbow, then they both have rotation at the wrist, and both are also hinged at the wrist, moving down and up. Then here the Mattel Elite articulation kicks in with the ab crunch, which moves this far forwards, and then this far back. Yet when you take advantage of this articulation, it's here where the straps as a separate piece presents a problem as it creates this gap where the strap should still be attached to the trunks. Both rotate at the waist, then at the hips, the Jack's figure's legs just move forwards and backwards, whereas the Mattel's figure's legs move out to the side and back in to the front and to, well, not so much to the back. They have upper leg rotation. Then the Jax one has just a single jointed knee, whereas the Mattel one has a double jointed knee and rotates at the top of the boot. Both should have an ankle hinge, which moves backwards and forwards. But as with many Mattel Elite figures on this one, it's frozen, yet there is a slight ankle pivot. Anyway, let me know in the comments below which demolition trio you 
you think is best? Is it Mattel or is it Jack Pacific? Me personally, I have to go with Mattel because I think unless you're looking through the rose tinted glasses of nostalgia for the Jack Pacific era of wrestling figures, then in this instance, it's hard to pick the Jax one as the better action figures. But hey, if you do, let us know in the comments below why you think that is. Anyway, to see Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels in an action figure comparison, click this video. Alternatively, check out the description beneath this video for links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Click those links and connect with me there too. Hope to see you in my next video. Bye.